Today I'm going to show you how I dyed up the colorway inspired by this picture for Waffle the World, uh, Wool and Fiber Arts Festival for August 2021. You can see that it's a beautiful sunset um, with a tree in front and it's mostly magenta and some purple with some black as well. So that's what I did to um, replicate this picture in yarn. Okay, this is Lily from Merino Ivino. And on August 27th, I am going to be a vendor for the Wool and Fiber Arts Festival, WAFA. Um, and so um, right now I'm dyeing up the August colorway, which is this beautiful sunset. And I went live, I guess it was just yesterday, um, asking people, you know, what they thought for the color and, um, they basically said that they liked working with DK weight. So I have 300 grams of DK weight yarn in here and, um, no acid, no heat It is monsoon season right now. So you might hear some thunder. Um, and I'm just going to do a little dye session. So, um, I'm creating a custom colorway for it. So right now there's right now there's not even um, any water in the pan. The skeins are pre-soaked, so they should be a little damp. So right now I'm just getting um, half a cup of water and yellow because at the very very tip of the picture um, there was yellow where the sun was setting. So now I'm gonna push it in to try to get it to go in as deeply as possible. Um, I chose not to use heat or acid right now, um, which could increase the spread a little bit, but as we know with sunsets, like there's color transitions, there's color mixing. So just pushing it in and it does look very bright, but it's going to go really well with the more moody, dark colors that you'll see um, later on. I like, you know, a little bit of contrast there. And if you're watching this and you're like, oh, I would love to work with that yarn, but I don't want just variegated, I want a solid color to go with it, let me know, I'd be happy to um, get that going. I can already tell I'm going to have to do some yellow on the other side, which is fine, but if I lift it, you can see that it's, you know, white on the other side, which totally cool. So I wanted the least bit amount of yellow because in the picture, there's not much yellow. So that's why I only did half a cup. I'm not rinsing this out um, because as I said, I do want some color change. So as I mentioned, I only did Whoa. <laughs> I don't have a very large space right here. I have to figure out how to make videos um, in such a small space um, as I continue. Um, so hopefully I don't hit the camera too much, but I only did half a cup of the yellow and now I'm going to do a full cup of a magenta and I'm hoping that there will be some overlap between magenta and yellow to make kind of an orange because that happens in the sky too. But I don't want it to totally take over the yellow. And that's the fun part about dyeing, is you never know exactly what's gonna happen. As I spill magenta on the table, that's okay, that's why we use protective coverings. <laughs> So I want the section of magenta to be bigger. So you can tell I'm getting right next to the yellow and even overlapping it on purpose a little bit. It looks very bright, which is okay. There we go. Um, because as well, when yarn is wet, 
it's brighter than when it dries. Yeah, the other day I was dying a new purple. I love purple. And actually on the live, you guys told me you love purple too. And I thought it was dying like a pure purple. It was so pretty. Um, but when it dried, it was more like a lilac color, which is still gorgeous. But not quite what I was going for. So I'm still going to sell it because, as I said, very pretty. But... Um, Still looking for that pure purple and I think it's just a saturation I just have to to have more dye in it so you can see I have some orange there's some irregular spread which is good and when you work with this of course it'll differ based on the pattern you're using but you'll get a little yellow and magenta and then we're going to go into some dark purple and then into some like light purple grayish at the very top because um, that's what the picture looks like and I'll end by speckling it with black um, but you'll get pink a little bit of orange magenta that and then it'll go back because that's how it's lying in the pot one thing that I want to work on this year and probably into next year is um, doing more gradients there's a few techniques for how to do gradients, so I'll be experimenting with that, which will be fun. So I'm doing another cup of water, and remember there is no other liquid in my dye pot right now. So, and that's because I don't want the colors to be running a ton underneath the yarn. I don't mind it a little bit because as I said, I want it to be um, like a sunset but I don't want it to just go hog wild underneath there. So for those of you who follow me on Instagram or on my website, my son is currently eight weeks old and some of you might be like, how are you dying yarn um, with a three-year-old, almost three-year-old at home and a newborn? Well, they're all asleep. And I have the monitor going. My husband's asleep too. <laughs> no rest for the wicked is what I say. So now we have some blue and this is quite a strong blue. I'm only doing a tablespoon of the uh, of the single or the one percent stock solution. Right now, the blue doesn't look like it even wants to blend with the magenta at all for purple. So I might have to go over that. But that's why we have over dyeing. I'm getting some. If I put it on the edge and push, you can see the blue is just shooting up. I may put I don't know what I'll do we'll see but the next color is hyacinth and I might just overlap that which is kind of a light purple I'm only gonna do half a cup of water with that one I'm shaking up my stock solutions as I go 
so that none of the dye settles. I don't care about overlap here. Now it looks kind of gray and that's because there's no um, heat or acid yet, which can change the color. So when I push, you can see the blue kind of goes in, which is good. I'm getting some purple right here. Since it's not soaking all the way through the yarn, which again, we can check and see it's very white on the other side still. Um, what I can do next time is kind of spread the magenta a little bit more. And then last but not least, I'm going to mix hyacinth and a gray. And once that is done, I am going to add acid and heat. I'm going to let it cook a little bit before flipping it. And I may have to rotate them a few times to make sure they're all covered in dye. Because I kind of like the saturated look. I mean, as an indie dyer, my prerogative, whatever <laughs> I like. And you can see this is kind of more of a gray tone, but very similar. And I find that pushing it down in the yarn really helps penetrate and make it a little even and you can see that there's a good amount of water in here now I can press down so one thing I might have to do is take the yarn out and dump the water once we flip sides a few times because I won't have then it'll really kind of go everywhere okay so And of course, the power can always go out with these storms, so we'll see. But you can see that this really is kind of a nice sunset. I've loved looking at the Alaska hat pattern for a long time now. And this might be a prototype for a gradient because this, I guess this could work with that hat as a background, but I always envisioned it as going up the hat like that. Now, another thing is with speckles, I like my speckles really small and tight. So I'm gonna speckle a little bit of black because there is black in the picture. I'm gonna put on a mask. I'm not gonna speckle each time I turn. I'll probably just speckle one other time. But I'm gonna stop talking since you probably won't be able to hear me. Just one pinch. You can see where the water's deeper. We get some bigger 
spots of black, which is fine. But these skeins will be fairly similar, not identical. Another joy of indie dyeing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pause this video, let it cook a little bit, and then we'll come back. So right now what I'm doing is I'm fast forwarding a little bit so you can see me work a little bit faster since I'm just doing the same thing on the other side. Since I was letting the yarn cook, I looked at the picture again and I saw that there wasn't blue in the sunset. It was just um, yellow at the very end with magenta and kind of a purple and a purplish gray and black. So I'm kind of going to rectify that on this side, but I still think that some of the blue on the other side will look really pretty. Uh, so you just saw me flip the yarn and I try to show as many white spots as possible um, so that I can get the yarn saturated with color and not have any white spots or dim spots. It doesn't always work every time, but um, so you can see on this side, I already did the yellow. I'm repeating the process with the magenta and this time with the magenta, I used more and took up more space. So uh, if the blue on the other side isn't completely set, it'll become kind of a purple, but some of the blue will also stay. And you can see that the um, magenta with the yellow made a beautiful orange as well that's quite saturated. Uh, I've never been a huge fan of orange, and from what I hear, a lot of people don't like working with orange yarn, but the more I dye, the more um, difficult it is for me to find the perfect orange, and so I'm, that's kind of the challenge is what orange do I want to work with. You can see that I'm pushing the yarn down again. There's quite a bit of water. I want to get it saturated. Just finished doing the same process that you saw. This looks a little bit more like the picture. Now I'm speckling, um, just to do it on that side. And then I was going to check the other sides to see if there was any more white spots and there weren't. So this is pretty much the finalized yarn and you'll have to see my booth to see what it looks like and buy one. Thank you so much for coming and listening.